Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I am here with, with the SCP End of Death Canon Season 2 Part 4, also known as Project Ectamarine. I don't think I'm saying it right, but that's not important. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. My eye tracking is going absolutely bonkers. Hang on. That's better. If you don't like the video, then I suppose I just gave you a very good reason not to like the video. Anyway, I'll see you all. Oh wait, no, we just start. Let's get into this. Project Ectamering. I love how the URL is literally Project Ectamering. Oh frick. I'm not actually saying the words, but you can read it. <sighs> 054 never gets messages during the daily 05 meeting, except for today, and he felt the buzz. Four took his phone out to set it to do not disturb. He glanced down at it out of instinct and caught the message on the screen. Kirk Erklin, Demering update. Someone is in site 27. Evan 15. More info or on your personal line. Oh, frick. Before I had to stop myself from saying anything out loud. His eyes lingered on the screen, reading it again to make sure he parsed right. The overseer was sitting next for a turn to him. Everything okay? Um, sorry, Ford said as he shoved his phone back in his pocket. This is urgent. I have to take this in my office. He packed up some papers and decided to leave the crowd of his room. But when the... Your vote comes, put me down in favor of, of classifying the AR suits as normal. And then he briskly walked out of the room. The other oversight ears didn't think much before his exits. Besides, there's so much going on in the Foundation. If every overseer required complete knowledge of what every other overseer directed, nothing would ever get done. They trusted each other enough not to ask too many questions. Meanwhile, Ford had broken into a sprint to back to his office. It's times like this that he wished he had picked a room closer to the main conference room instead of in the opposite wing, on a different floor. So six hallways and two flights of stairs layered, or he never takes the elevator when going one, only one floor up. Or he bursts into his office, locked the door right behind him, and took a moment to breathe at his desk. Frick, he muttered to himself, then took a deep breath and decided to pick up the phone. Sometime in 2014, 054 became afraid of death. His brother, niece, and mentor all passed away within weeks of each other. The first died in a drunk driving accident. The second was shot during a third period math class. The third died of a heart attack at the age of 86. It was a lot. 054 didn't deal with it all too well. He went by Daniel back then, so he would hear a lot of, Oh, Daniel, I'm so sorry. Don't know if there's anything you need to talk, talk about. Just give me a call. You can take a break if you want, Daniel. Take a few days to mourn. And Daniel did, but it didn't help much. Death was something that happened to the class and MTF agents, not to friends and family. He had trouble processing it. it. Didn't help that the three funerals were scheduled all day to one day apart. In the end, Daniel never really got over it. But really, it's not too surprising. Foundation personnel really dealt with it that well to begin with. Hello, is this 054? Yes, who is this? Erica Dunders, you asked me to look over the Project Demerung funding? Right, right, you said someone is in the site 2718? Yes, I just got back to power bill for the site, it's harder than usual is. Like someone else is running the lights and power outlets all day. Intruders? Maybe, they didn't set off any alarms, so maybe someone from the original team? 054 placed a receiver up on his desk and pulled up a list of, re of the researchers on the project. He went through one by one, checking their current assignment and status within the Foundation. Um, hello, sir, are you still there? 
There it was. O5-4 clicked on the link to Dr. Young's assignment status. Lat S position, lead researcher of SCP-4514. Current position, unassigned. In 2018, Anna was required to was recruited to join the O5 Council. The reasons were never clear to him, but then again, dealing with the upper echelons of the Foundation is marquee business. He replaced the previous O5-4 who simply could not continue to fulfill their act obligations as part of the Council. Three days after he received this new title, Daniel began cultivating a small team. It was an open secret that every O5 member had pet projects that only they knew about. This was Daniels. The first person who had who he cleared to be on the team was none other than a zealous Emily Young. He met her while spending time at Site 44. Who's supposed to be taking into Who's supposed to be talking to the research leads there about possible changes to D class testing regulations? When he knows Emily is literally running through the halls with a sack of paper in her hand. She nearly crashed into Daniel, saying the uh, saying loose leaf if I like, such a weird wording. Anyway. Oh, sorry, Emily said as she crashed down, started picking up papers. It's fine, just slow down a little. Then, or I. What's the point anyway? Test results. Test results for what? Emily saw to look up at Daniel. For the damn inside thing, I think we figured it out. Let's see, inside thing. 2797 is... What? Oh, well, good work then. Now I don't know what Emily was talking about, but something about her enthusiasm made him interested. She cleaned her papers and scampered off, shouting, and Eureka, she ran the corner. When Daniel got back to his office at Site 1, he did research for Foundation research reports with the word inside in the title. The most recent one that uh, popped up was authored by Emily Young. Two months later, he called her to her office to offer her position on his little project. 054 picked up the receiver again. When did you say the energy bill got hiked? About a month ago or so ago. Hard to tell exactly. We don't pay for utilities once a day. O five four dug through the project out of Damarang folder on his computer. He hadn't had to open it ever since the start of Omega K. Until about a month ago when he had a new special version of the SCP-4514 document. It was largely the same as one on the public base, database, except for a modified discovery section. Discovery. On May 14, 2130, SCP-4514 was recovered following a violent altercation between not two favorite individuals, Foundation Agent Alexander Ardurango and a civilian named Benjamin Wolf. The quarrel resulted in SCP-4514 used to kill not one of the involved persons, Walt, specifically. Foundation personnel were alerted and after the local paper published a story covering the event, who administered amnestics to all witnessing parties. A this information campaign was run there after to discredit the news agency. The following is an interview conducted with Durango following the recovery of SCP-4514. Afternoon, Alex. Afternoon. This just going to be the standard after-instant interview. 
Yeah, I'll just start with the usual question. Where did you get the knife? A close friend gave it to me. L a long, long time ago. What's friend? He's not around anymore. He died a few days before Omega K started. That doesn't mean he doesn't have a name. Fair, fair. His name was Anthony Michaels. Did Michaels do anything interesting to the knife? I've not that I can think of, although I can't be sure. It was really important to him. Carried around everywhere. A gift from his dad when he joined the foundation. Huh, you know why he would give you something so personal? Not sure. Just got in the mail one day with a letter that said, take good care of it. Obviously, I freaked that part up. I see. Well, I think that's all for me. Good luck with your supervisor. Thanks. I'll need it. 14th of May, 054, double check the calendar. 17th of June. Frick. Excuse me, sir? Of all the things Daniel never thought to plan for, it was his overcompletion of his objective. The goal of the Project Ekdemarang was selectively immortal was selective immortality to allow certain individuals to live forever. I'm guessing that since since we know how things work, Eric, eventually the governor will find out and make it so that only rich people live forever. You know. Because that's how things work in our society. Anyway, this meant that Daniel prepared for the possibility of accidentally killing people or accidentally hurting them, or simply giving elongated at life instead of immortality. He thought the margin of error would might be focused on the immortality part of the goal, not on the selective part. This is why on September 12th of 2020, Daniel had to work entirely off the cuff to hide Project Demerang from the rest of the foundation. He ordered the records to be destroyed, that the site be deserted. He ordered the installation of the entire project team. He asked for a lot, obviously some that fell through the cracks. He had, had recruited excited researchers who, who could keep their lips shut, but he didn't look at loyalty too closely. However, he didn't think too much about the possibility that his team might simply desert him. Less than a minute after he got off his last call with Emily, he was summoned to the emergency 05 council while meeting. The meeting opened with the expected question, what exactly is happening and how can it be contained? They laid out a priority list. One. Population control. Two, veil control. Three, terminal state replacement. After the last priority was written on, on a board, Daniel could feel himself start to speak, almost on reflex. Why do we need to fix it? The entire Earth Council turned to him. He resisted the urge to fidget with his, his pen. This obviously falls out of baseline, 059 replied. We need to reestablish its normalcy. It's the cornerstone of what we do here. Right, but what if this isn't reversible? We haven't even started reaching into it, I know, but it would be silly to put our resources into finding a solution that doesn't exist. Daniel tried hard to believe the words he was saying, but he didn't care about raising resources. He just wanted to keep his immortality. 4. This conversation is not conducted to our current, is not con conducted to our current in situation. We can revisit the issue after we've made some progress, 051 said. Daniel conceded a point let, and let the meeting crestfallen. The foundation was full of smart people. They were bound to figure something out if they tried hard enough. At least that's what Daniel told himself for the next year. And when no progress had been made, he hedged the statement a little more. I didn't a little more the next year. And ten years had gone by and still no one had a, a dang clue who had to deal with Omega K. It helped that Emily put herself in, in a coma five years in. So Daniel pleased to get her proposal. He put forth during the 05 council meeting. Proposal date, September 16th, 2030. Update proposal, reclassification of immortality among species in the kingdom in Animalia as non-anomalous. Dialogue. It's been just over 10 years since the start of the Mega class end of death scenario. The world has been exposed to the phenomenon of immortality the entire time and has begun to adjust to it. Are we continuing to throw viable... All well, time and resources is either attempting to reverse this phenomenon, though thus far there is no progress in sight. While I agree that immortality is certainly not within what we should consider a baseline reality, 
Retiring the world to baseline and would most likely have more disastrous consequences than leaving things the way they are. People would have to relearn what it means to fear death, to fear danger. A large portion of the population would most likely kill themselves within a week of the of the restoration to baseline. And even then, the entire human population would have been exposed to the existence of this anomaly. Some have discussed the possibility of an administrative amnesics ex worldwide to cause a hard reset. The act of inducing amnesia in the entire human race will likely be as catastrophic as restoring death without alerting anyone. At this point in time, the most reasonable course of action would be to accept the world as it is now. Once we can accept the nature of the situation, we could focus our, our efforts on maintaining our new baseline. Conclusion. Conclusion. Proposal passed by a vote of 7 to 5. To one. Guessing seven agreed, five disagreed, and one abstained. O five four hung up the phone, forgetting to thank Erica for the alert. He was not about to lose his most prized possession because some researchers regret their actions from a hundred years ago. Emily was not going to take his immortality away. O five four sent a message to his secretary. From O five four. To Greg Kirkland. Subject. Urgent. Demarang emergency. Message. Send red right hand to twenty to site twenty seven eighteen. And that is it for season two, part four. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you did not enjoy this video, then you just wasted about 16 minutes of your time. Anyway, I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye!